stood a grave free every captive break every chain oh god you have done great things dance in your freedom awake and alive jesus our savior your name lifted high oh god you have done great things You've been faithful through every storm. You'll be faithful forevermore. You have done great things. And I know you will do it again. For your promise is yes and amen. You will do great things. God, you'll do great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive, break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. You dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God. You have done great things. And hallelujah, God, above it all. Oh, hallelujah, God, unshakable. Oh, hallelujah, you have done great things. And hallelujah, God, Above it all, oh, hallelujah, God, unshakable, oh, hallelujah, you have done great things. Hero of heaven, you conquered the grave, you free every captive, you break every chain, oh God, you have done great things. Dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. Oh, hero of heaven. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive, you break every chain. Oh, God. You have done great things. You dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. 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 Water you turn into wine You open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you There's none like you Into the darkness you shine And out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you Our God is greater Our God is stronger God you are higher than any other Our God is healer Awesome in power Our God 
darkness into the darkness you shine and out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you there's none like you our god is greater our god is stronger god you are higher than any other our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, our God is greater, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? What could stand against? Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God you are great, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, Awesome in power, our God, our God. And if our God is for us, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? What could stand against? Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Lord God, I believe that you are greater, you're stronger, you're the one who has his hand on everything. Everything we see in this world, Lord, you hold it together. Your word promises that. Everything outside of this world and the universe, it's because of your great love. It's because of your great power. It's because of your great strength. It's because you're God. We are not, and there is no God before you, above you. We thank you, Lord, that you hold us in your hands and you hold us together. May we really, truly let that resonate from inside of us as we sing the rest of these songs. You are able. You are more than able.
God is able, He will never fail. He is Almighty God, greater than all we see, greater than all we ask. He has done great things, lifted up, defeated a grave. Raised to life, our God is able. In His name, we overcome. For the Lord, our God is able. Yes, God is with us, God is on our side, He will make a way, far above all we know, far above all we hope, He has done great things, lifted up, defeated a grave. Raised to life, our God is able. In His name, we overcome. For the Lord, our God is able. is with us he will go before he will never leave us he will never leave us god is for us he has open arms he will never fail us he will never fail us lifted up he defeated a grave raised to life our god is able in his name we overcome for the lord our god is able lifted up he defeated a grave raised to life our god is able his name we overcome for the Lord our God is able for the Lord our God is able
bring light to the darkness. You give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your join all of heaven in, in pronouncing our praise to you, Lord Jesus. We, we lift you up. And it's that greatness that we praise you about, that we hold on to today, and that we trust and believe that you are still that God that answers prayers. You are still that God that does miracles. You are still that God that makes a way where there seems to be no other way. So Jesus, it's with that in our hearts and in our minds that we come to you today. Hallelujah. I want us to trust God today that he will meet every need according to his riches and glory, according to what his word says. His word says he's a healer and a provider. He restores. A lot of these things that we've just sung about Jesus. It, it's so true. It's right from his word. And some of us, we need that today. We need the Lord to provide for us in some way. We need God to restore what the enemies tried to break and destroy. 
We need God to be the healer. Uh, and, and, and he's able. <laughs> he's able to do more than we could even imagine him doing. And so today we're going to trust him and we're going to believe that he will do everything that his word says that he will do. And I want us to pray today. And if you're joining us live on the Facebook stream, uh, perhaps you can uh, go ahead and uh, if you have a need today or if you want prayer for something specific, why don't you go ahead and type that in the comment section and we will use that as a prayer list. And all those that are watching online, they'll see your prayer request and they'll pray for you as well. And we're going to pray for one another. We're going to pray for those that uh, we know that are in need. We still have a number that are recovering from surgery. I especially want us to remember Juanita uh, Di Tommaso today who is, uh, just needs a great touch from the Lord. She left a voicemail for me last night and, and just asking her church to pray for us. And uh, I know that we can do that. Uh, there, there's no amount of social distancing that will take us away from the reach of Jesus, right? And so when we come together and when we pray, God just does great things. And so we're going to trust God that he will touch Juanita and those that are continuing to recover uh, from procedures and surgeries, those who have been touched in some way, shape, or form by this, uh, this virus that's hit our nation and affected different people different ways. But here's what I know. God's greater than all of that. He's greater than all of that. And we're going to believe God right now to touch every need that's represented in this church family, every need that's represented by those that are watching this stream. And uh, we're, going to, we're going to believe God for miracles. So will you join me, whether it's those of us that are literally in this room or those that are watching online, we're going to join together now. And we're going to believe God to do great things. So let's pray. Jesus, right now, we come to you, and it's in your mighty name that we do so, Lord God the name that is above all names. Lord God, we come to you believing that you are a God who answers prayer. You're a God who does miracles. You're a God that heals and provides and restores and, and you fix things, Lord God. You, uh, you do all of that and so much more. And so Jesus, we come to you today and we ask you that you would meet every need that is represented uh, either literally in this building or those that are watching online, Jesus, we just pray right now that you would reach those. In fact, God, we, we lift up those that are far from you, those that are heavy on our hearts, that have drifted from you. I ask you, Jesus, that you would do what it takes, that they would come to a saving knowledge of you, and God, that they would live for you. Instead of doing things their way, may they do things your way. So we lift up our unsaved loved ones and we ask you, Jesus, that you would touch them. God, every person who needs healing, every person who needs to recover, we lift up one needed to you. And God, I pray that you would just be the glory and the lifter of her head. God, I pray that you would just change her tears to hope and joy. And God, that you would give that lady who loves you so much, God, give her peace. And we as a church collectively, we just lift her up right now. We pray that you would touch her. Jesus, every other need that's represented, you knew it before we even typed it. You knew it before we entered this room. You knew it, Lord God, before we even woke up today. And you have a plan. So we trust you and we believe that you will do it. So God, will thank you. We'll give you praise and glory and honor for everything that you do. In the mighty name of Jesus. And we all said amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hey, do us a favor, by the way. If God ever answers one of your prayers, uh, let us know. Man, we, we love testimonies around here. Uh, there's been way too much bad news in our country for the last few months. We, we want good news. And, and we know that God is doing some really great things lately, and we've seen him do it. And so... I'm thankful for what he's doing. So let us know when God does something special for you and when he protects you, when he supplies for you, when he does a miracle. We want to know about that too. So, uh, and we'll rejoice with you. We really will. Praise God. Well, speaking of rejoicing, I am thrilled to announce uh, that uh, in two weeks from today, June the 7th, uh, we will be having a public, live, face-to-face 
services here uh, in the church again, and we're excited about that. And that will take place on Sunday, June the 7th, beginning at 10 a.m. And uh, we are thankful that we have this opportunity to worship again. Uh, as I said before, you'll, you'll probably notice a few uh, adjustments and changes. Um, for example, all of the chairs in the sanctuary have been replaced with pillows. And so, so, so if you ever needed another reason to sleep during my sermon, now you've got it. So it's kind of cool. And uh, with a matching Snuggie in the wintertime. So keep that in mind as well. It'll have the Bethel logo. No. Uh, but, but we have a rearranged just a few things. We've rearranged the chairs just a little bit. And uh, now here's what I know. Here's what I know. I've had several people tell me, well, Pastor, I'm glad that you're opening up. I'm still going to wait a few weeks. Uh, and, and you know what? That's fine. Because here's the good news. We're going to keep doing this live stream thing. And uh, so you don't have to miss what's going on in here, even though you might not be in here, <laughs> okay? Now, here's what I know. This live stream is definitely not a substitute for uh, worshiping together, but bless God, he has used this means to touch a lot of people and meet a lot of needs, and we've been blown away by the influence uh, that, that God's given us, and the impact, I should say, not the influence, but the impact that God's given us to people literally all over the country, and uh, we're, we're thankful for that. So we know that we need to continue doing this, and so we're going to. Uh, but I can't wait to worship together with you all again. So many of you, uh, I, I miss all of you, even the weird ones. I miss you too, and you know, you know who you are. And, uh, but uh, yeah, and, and we have people on the stage raising their hands because yes, that's me. But um, we are uh, we're excited about that. I should also say that the following Wednesday, the 10th, we'll have a live Bible study as well going on as well. And so I'm excited to just start getting in the groove again. Now, you're going to be hearing from me uh, all throughout these next two weeks special announcements in regards to our reopening and what that's going to look like and what that entails. And so if you have email... Uh, or if you're watching me right now, you'll be able to catch my announcements. Uh, and, and we'll be touching on different things like you know, what we do with kids ministry and things like that. So I'll give you all those details as we uh, go day by day here. And so I'm excited about this. So mark it on your calendar, June the 7th. It's going to be a great day. We're going to rejoice together. And uh, while I'm at it, why don't I give you the weekly schedule for, for this week? I'm going to be online a few times to uh, chat with you and to be with you this week. Uh, obviously, right now we're live streaming our service. Uh, tomorrow's a holiday, Memorial Day, and so whatever your tradition is, I hope you are able to enjoy it. Uh, Tuesday at 11 a.m., I'll have a little online chat, and uh, we'll just get together and, uh, and uh, just talk and say hi to one another. Wednesday uh, at 7 o'clock, you can tune in right where you're at now. You'll be able to see our online Bible study. Friday at 11, I'll have an online prayer meeting where we will be seeking God together on behalf of you and our country and our church. And then next week, again, we're going to be live streaming our service. So excited about all of that. So make sure you tune in and uh, catch us and uh, good things are happening here. So we're thankful. Uh, the worship team is going to minister in song one more time and during that time we want to give you a chance to give and i've said it so many times um who, whoever would have thought two months ago that the lord would uh not only take care of the financial needs of a church during this crazy pandemic time but the lord would actually increase our giving uh, at that time. I mean, it has been mind-blowing to see what the Lord has done uh, in these last several weeks. And, and I will tell you, it's because of faithful givers like all of you. And when, when I see you mail your checks online, and that's an act of worship that you're doing. And those of you who, who, uh, uh, who mail them snail mail, uh, I guess that was a rim shot. I'm not sure what that was. So I wasn't even telling the joke and I'm getting rim shots. That's awesome. But, um, 
but those of you who mail in your checks, <laughs> George is awesome. I love George. He, he is, he's just the best. And, uh, but those, so those of you who send your checks to the mail, those of you who uh, go to our website online, it's just awesome. And so thank you. God, God is using you so greatly. I can't, I can't emphasize that enough. So we want to give you a chance again. And if you'd like to give online at this time, we're going to flash that address on the screen. It's bcot.org slash give. And uh, thank you for your faithfulness. And thank you for your giving. It's, uh, you have made me proud of you. You really have. And I brag about, I, I, I literally do this. I brag about all of you to other pastors. And it's like, they really need to be jealous because I have such a great church here. I, and they shouldn't be jealous, but man, it just, I'm so thankful that, that I have the church family that I have. It's just great. So love you so much. And I'm so proud of you. And I thank you. So let's give and let's worship the Lord in this time. And then as soon as we're done singing, I'm going to bring forth the word here today, okay? Can I pray for you? God, I pray for every financial need that's represented in this service here today. Whether they be in this building, whether they be watching live, maybe they're watching us later on our YouTube channel, God, whatever the case might be. I pray, God, that you would meet every financial need that's represented here, God. And in this time that we give, we trust you that you will bless the gift and the giver. Make this church wise stewards of what you bless us with. But God, don't stop there. Bless those that give. And I pray that we would give today with a joyful heart. And Lord, that you would show your goodness through every giver that is represented here today. God, there may be some that are in a place where they don't feel that they can give. Lord, would you just touch their heart? Let them know it's not about an amount. It's about our hearts to you. And God, I ask you that you would just wrap your arms around them and provide unexpected blessings for them. And I'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah In the presence of my enemies I raise a hallelujah Louder than my unbelief I raise a hallelujah Weapon is a melody I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder. You're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated. a hallelujah with everything inside of me I raise a hallelujah I will watch the darkness flee I raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery I raise a hallelujah Fear your lost your hold on me
louder. Sing a little louder. Let's sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Let's sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Let's sing a little louder. Sing a little louder in the presence of my enemies. Let's sing a little louder, louder than the unbelief. Let's sing a little louder. My weapon is a melody. Let's sing a little louder. Heaven comes to fight for me. Let's sing a little louder in the presence of my enemies. Let's sing a little louder. Appreciate it, and uh, thank you so, again so much, everybody, for joining us here today. And uh, I'm excited to share a message with you today. If you want to grab your Bibles, if you have one near you, and turn to the book of Second Kings, Second Kings, chapter eight, and we're going to begin in verse one, and we're going to go through verse six. So, Second Kings, chapter eight, we're going to start in verse one and go to verse 6 today. I have titled this message, I Want It Back. I Want It Back. I Want It Back. We're going to take a look at uh, an individual who was going through some difficult times and needed, uh, needed something special to take place in our lives here today. And this is kind of a unique story, kind of an interesting story from First Kings. Uh, I'm sorry, Second Kings, Second Kings, chapter eight. And we want to give you time to go ahead and turn there. Uh, we will. Uh, we're going to take a look at a woman whose name we don't even know, and yet she found herself experiencing uh, something pretty special in her life today. I want to take this woman's experience and I want to encourage you to know that God has something for you. Specifically, if you feel that there's something missing in your life today, the Lord wants to give it back to you. And so today, uh, let me show you from this scripture uh, what I'm talking about, okay? I trust you're all there. And if you don't have your Bible with you, you can follow me on, on the, the screen. We've got all the scriptures for you today on the screen as well. So here we go. Uh, starting in verse 1, you ready? Now Elisha had said to the woman whose son he had restored to life, Go away with your family and stay for a while wherever you can, because the Lord has decreed a famine in the land that will last seven years. And the woman proceeded to do as the man of God said. She and her family went away and stayed in the land of the Philistines for seven years. At the end of the seven years, she came back from the land of the Philistines, 
and went to appeal to the king for her house and her land. The king was talking to Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, and had said, tell me about all the great things that Elisha has done. And just as Gehazi was telling the king how Elisha had restored the dead to life, the woman whose son Elisha had brought back to life came to appeal to the king for her house and land. Gehazi, uh, Gehazi said, This is the woman, my lord, the king, and this is her son whom Elisha restored to life. And the king asked the woman about it, and she told him. And then he assigned an official to her, to her case and said to him, Give back everything that belonged to her, including all the income from her land from the day she left the country until now. The title of this message again is, I want it back. What's missing from your life that you need God to bring back into your life? So let's pray. Jesus, I ask you now that you and your word would be active in a huge way in everybody who might be listening to this message here today. We ask you, Lord God, that you would touch all that are listening, all that are looking at your word. God, your word never returns back void. So God, we trust you to do great things with it. And we'll thank you and give you the praise today in Jesus' name. And we all said, amen. Amen. Now, this is not, I'm going to get my water. This is not the first time that we have seen this woman in scripture in second kings chapter four we're not going to turn back there but in chapter four so we're in chapter eight today so four chapters prior we see this woman kind of pop in uh, the bible identifies her as a well-to-do woman who uh, whom god had uh, done some miracles through elisha in her life she became, for lack of a better word, she became a very big supporter of Elisha's ministry, taking care of Elisha, even had a room, uh, an apartment, if you will, uh, in their residence, in her family's household that was devoted to Elisha. So she took great care of Elisha. That brings us now to chapter 8. In chapter 8, we see that Elisha uh, had received revelation from God that he was going to bring a famine onto the land because God's people, once again, had been unfaithful. And so as punishment to those people, he was bringing famine and drought to that land. Elisha went to this woman. Uh, a lot of people call this woman the Shunammite woman. They went to this woman, or he went to this woman and said, here's the deal. We've got a famine coming. It's going to last for seven years. And so what you need to do is to get you and your family out of here, go someplace else that's not impacted by the famine whatsoever, and you stay there till the famine lifts, and then you can come back. And that's precisely what she did. But here's the thing. When she came back, something was missing from her life. Today, I want to ask if there are any obedient people listening to the voice of God who are trying their best to serve him, but in all honesty, there is something missing from your life today. God is a restoring God. We just sang about that. He restores. And I'm asking God to do just that today as we look at his word. So here's how I want to accomplish this. I want to look at three parts of this story here today. There's three parts of this story that I want to isolate and kind of give us to... to to check out and to read together and learn from here. And uh, I think you're going to be blessed by what God has to say to us from this scripture. So let's take, it the first, take a look at the first part. I can't talk today. Not good if you're a preacher. Uh, but let's take a look at the first part. I want to take a look at the person whom I call the outcast. The outcast. Uh, let's, let's dig a little deeper and let's look a little closer at the woman who is the central figure, really, of this story. Now again, look again at verse 1 and verse 2. We've got them all together. It says, Now Elisha had said to the woman, whose son he had restored to life, Go away with your family and stay for a while wherever you can 
because the Lord has decreed a famine in the land that will last seven years. And the woman proceeded to do as the man of God said. She and her family went away and they stayed in the land of the Philistines for seven years. Now, there are some things about this woman that I think that some of us can relate to here today, believe it or not. And let me show you what I mean. In verse 1, we see that this woman had seen the miraculous take place. She literally saw the supernatural moving of God take place. Remember when I mentioned chapter 4 of the same book? This woman had actually uh, been provided a son by the Lord, and later that son died. And Elisha was used instrumentally to pray in a unique way, but to pray for the son, and the son came back to life. This woman had literally seen miracles take place, literally saw the dead raised, her own child brought back to life. See, I'm talking to people who have experienced the miraculous today. Many of us in here, we can testify today that we have seen God answer prayer. We can testify today that we have seen the supernatural take place. We have seen answers to prayer. We've seen miracles. We have seen great things. But how many of you know that doesn't mean we always have it all together? How many of you know that sometimes life isn't perfect even if our history with God is really good? Maybe the present part of our life isn't so great and maybe there's something missing in the midst of the miracles that we've seen in the past she had seen the miraculous secondly she was mindful of the lord's directions not only had she experienced and seen the miraculous but she was mindful of the lord's directions again we saw in verses one and two Elisha, who was the mouthpiece of God. Let me remind you how this worked, okay? Uh, they didn't have the Bible like we have back then. So Elisha was God's prophet. He was God's mouthpiece. He spoke, and all the prophets did this, and the judges, they did this. They spoke on behalf of God to the people. And so God is literally speaking to this woman through Elisha and he gives her this command he says famine's coming and here's what I need you to do I need you to get out of your current comfort zone and I need you to go someplace else and live for seven years now I don't know about you but I hate moving I hate moving a true test of your friendship with somebody is to see if they are willing to help you move somewhere. Can I have an amen? If they're willing to do that, they will go to battle with you, that's for sure. Uh, and, and there's nothing I hate more than trying to move uh, anything, uh, especially my house. I don't like changing addresses at all. This woman with her family, and again, this woman was a well-to-do woman, so good chance that she had quite a few possessions, Good chance that she had quite a nice residence and she was told by Elisha, you need to get out of town. Not just for a day, not just for a week, and not just for a month, but you need to get out of town for seven years. As long as this famine goes, you need to get out. So she was taken to a place that was really out of her element. That was out of what she was comfortable with. But she was obedient. May I applaud those of us who are willing to obey God and listen to his, not only just listen to his word, but to obey his word. May I applaud those of us who are willing to do that even when it's uncomfortable to do so. Even when it takes us out of our comfort zone. And even when being taken out of our comfort zone is an extended amount of time. That's precisely what this woman did. I got to tell you, there's some great things about this woman. She was a supporter of the prophet Elisha. She had seen miraculous answers to prayer, including her son 
being brought back to life. She listened to the instructions of God, was very mindful of that. But she had something missing. Something was missing. Something was missing. So she was obedient to God. She's gone for seven years. And when she comes back and tries to reclaim her house, she doesn't own her house anymore. She doesn't own her land anymore. anymore. Now, we're not sure what happened here. Maybe some people just grabbed it during the famine and said, it's mine now. She's been gone, so squatter's rights. I'm just going to take it. Uh, maybe, maybe some members of the, 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 the ruling leaders or the government, maybe they took it. You know, we're not sure what went on here. All we know is this. Okay? The woman who saw the miraculous and was obedient and mindful of the leading of God found herself coming back and her house was no longer hers. She was missing her house. She was missing something very important to her in the midst of all the obedience, in the midst of the supernatural history that she had experienced. Now, let's flesh this out. I'm talking to people who have experienced the miraculous. I'm talking to people who have experienced obeying God even when it seemed uncomfortable to do so. No problem. You have been dedicated to God. You have an amazing history with God. But today something's missing. May I ask you, is there something missing from your life that rightfully should be there? Is there something missing in your life? I'm talking to followers of Jesus here. Now, let me back up. If you're not even serving Jesus today, if Jesus is not the Lord of your life, I could plainly tell you what's missing from your life, and that's Jesus. You need Jesus. If you've tried to get through the crazy that, is this, that, that has been this country for the last two to three months, and you've tried to do that without Jesus, that's not the way you have been wired. That's not the way God has created you. God has created you to supernaturally depend on him and that he would be the answer to everything that you need. So I would encourage you today. In fact, at the end of the service, I'm going to give you a chance to get your life completely right with God. But I will be honest with you, I am primarily even talking to people who are already serving God, who've already had great things happen, who know what it is to serve him and obey him. And they could point t- to testimonies where God's been faithful. But today, something's missing from your life. What could that be? For you, it might be your happiness. It might be your fulfillment in life. You're just not fulfilled. You're not satisfied. You're not happy. Maybe your sense of security is missing right now. And so you've tried to replace that with relationships, maybe even a wrong relationship. You've tried to replace that with something that's visible. Maybe today your health is missing. Maybe there was a time where you were pain-free. Maybe there was a time where you didn't wake up so sick all the time. Maybe there was a time in your life where you had so much more peace in your life. Maybe you're kind of lonely today and uh, your friendships, quality friendships. I'm not talking about Facebook friendships. I'm talking about real, real, genuine friendships. Maybe that's missing from your life today. Maybe your hope. Maybe your love for other people. I mean, the list can really go on and on. Is there something, child of God, that is missing 
from your life. See, what made this woman the outcast was the fact that she was previously well-to-do and doing great. The Bible even identifies that she had a husband before this famine took place. Now we have no record or mention of her husband at all. It seems to be just her and the boy. And it appears, it appears that she might be homeless and husbandless, making her in that society a bit of an outcast. And what she once had is no longer there. I'm not here to call you an outcast. What I'm here to tell you is that it is possible to have the resume that this woman had and to be missing something very important in your life today. And that brings me to number two. We saw the outcast, this woman, the Shunammite woman, who had experienced so many wonderful things. But secondly today, I want to take a look at her outlook Not only do I want to take a look at the outcast, but I want to take a look at the outlook here today. What what was her plan? What was her attitude with this? What was she going to do? I actually love her response. Look at verses 3, 4, and 5. Verse 3 says, At the end of the seven years, she came back from the land of the Philistines, and she went to appeal to the king for her house and her land. The king was talking to Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, and had said, tell me about all the great things that Elisha has done. Look at verse 5. And just as Gehazi was telling the king how Elisha had restored the dead to life, the woman whose son Elisha had brought back to life came to appeal to the king for her house and land. Gehazi said, this is the woman, my lord, the king, and this is her son, whom Elisha restored to life. What was this woman's outlook? What was her plan? See, what she did is the same thing that I am going to challenge you to do today. Her outlook was this. Number one, I'm going to come to the king. I'm going to come to the king. I'm going to go to the king. I'm going to approach the king about my situation, I have some good news for you. Each and every one of us, we have a king. God the Father, the king of all kings, whom we can approach today, whom we can come to and give to him our needs and to give to him our requests See, this is an amazing privilege that we have as Christians. Do not miss this. See, you don't have to have a go-between to get your needs met. You don't have to call me. You don't have to email me and tell me to put a good word in with the big guy for you to get your miracle, for you to get your answer. That's not how this works. You can go directly to the king. This woman this outcast, if you will, made the decision to go directly and have an audience with the king. We still have that same privilege. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 tells us this. It says, let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of of need. You see, this woman had a king whom she could appeal to to get her house back. You have a king whom you can appeal to to get your happiness back, to get your joy back, to get your health back, to get your security back, to get what has been missing from your life. Maybe for years it's been missing from your life, but today you have a king whom you can go directly to the King of kings, Jesus Christ. And he is here to hear you and to give you your grace that you need in your time of need. What an amazing privilege. Her outlook started with this. I'm going to come to the king. I'm going right to the king. Secondly, our outlook here, our plan is not just to come to the king, 
but let's trust the timing of the Lord. Now, a lot of us don't like this part. Okay, we're okay with praying. We're, in, in fact, and let me just say, okay, the last thing you need to do at this point in your life, if something's missing from your life, the last thing you need to do is put a distance between you and the king. That's the last thing you should do. What you need to do is approach the king with confidence. But then when you do that, you need to trust that God's got a plan here and that he's going to work this out. Now, this story is amazing because I believe it's verses 4 and 5. The king, for some reason, has an audience with Elisha's servant. His name is Gehazi. Don't name your children this name. But Gehazi, it's, you'll never find a bookmark that has Gehazi on it, so don't do it. So Gehazi is sitting there, or, or at least standing there, with the king, and the king says, Hey, Gehazi, you know what I'd like from you? I would like for you to tell me about the great exploits of Elisha. Tell me some stories. Tell me what Elisha did. I've heard all kinds of things, but Elisha... Ge Gehazi, you were right there. What, what did Elisha do? What kind of things did he accomplish? What, what took place? And Gehazi starts off by saying, here's the best one I got, king. You ready for this? Once upon a time. This is about seven years ago or so. Right before the famine started, king. But there was this woman, this Shunammite woman, and her son died. And Elisha prayed for him, and he came back to life. Now, did you catch the story? While Gehazi is telling the story, this is like the greatest sermon illustration you could ever ask for. While he's telling this story about this kid coming back to life and the mom of the kid, who walks in? The mom and the kid. The very people that Gehazi was telling the story about, in they come. Do you think that was a coincidence? Do, do you think God actually said, whoo, -hoo, Wow! How lucky am I today, angels? That's not how God works. Let me just pause here. As far as God is concerned, if you're a follower of Jesus, there is no such thing as a coincidence as far as I'm concerned. And there's no such thing as luck. Boy, was I lucky that, that You weren't lucky. God had his hand on you. God had his hand on your situation. That's how that happened. And so in walks that very woman. Gehazi picks, of all the stories, Gehazi picks that story. And as he's telling the story about that woman and that child, in comes that woman and that child, and she wants to get her house back. Do you think that timing is coincidental? Absolutely not. You know what Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1 tells us? It says, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. You listen to me closely. If you think that God somehow has fallen off the rails and somehow can't figure out how to get your need met, you are wrong. God's got a time. He has a season picked out. He's got a plan picked out. You just need to not only come to your king and give him your prayers, but you have got to trust the timing and the plan of the Lord because he knows what he's doing. He's going to work it out. Christian, do you think it's actually just a stroke of luck that God blessed you financially at just the right time? Or, or let me rephrase that, that you came across some money when you needed to have that financial need? Do you think that was just luck? No. It was at that moment that God forgave that debt. It was at that moment that God put the right doctor in your path 
so that you can get treatment. It was at that moment that God spoke to your son or your daughter about where they were. It was at that moment that God put somebody or something in that place, in that position, in that moment to see the miracle take place. Listen to me. Come to your king. Approach him with confidence today, but trust that his timing is always perfect. Always perfect. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. God's not faking it. God is not just trying to get by. God's not scrambling. God's not calling an emergency committee meeting with the angels on your behalf because you're such a train wreck. God's got all of this under control and he knows how to speak to your situation. Come to the king. Trust his timing. <laughs> We've seen the outcast. We've seen this woman who was at least homeless and might have even been husbandless. We saw her outlook. I'm going to come to the king. And I'll trust his timing. But I want you to take a real close look at the outcome. What, what took place when this woman, who had been nothing but faithful, approached the king. Look what happened. Look at verse 6. Verse 6 says this, the king asked the woman about it and she told him. Basically, yeah, that's me. This is my boy. He's around 10 now. He's bigger. Still alive. And what did, what did the king do? Then he assigned an official to her case and said to him, look, look at the orders. You ready? Give back everything that belonged to her including all the income from her land from the day that she left the country until now. Oh, this is good. What was the outcome when she went to the king and God's timing was perfect? Number one, there was restoration. God... God God restored, God restored what had been missing from this woman's life. The king said, her house, her land, give it back to her. That is rightfully hers. I got to believe that your Lord in heaven is looking on your situation. And as you come to the king of kings and you say, God, my happiness is missing. My peace is missing. This is missing from my life. That is missing from my life. I got to believe that God will say, now it's back. That thing that has been missing from your life for so long, I am giving it back to you now. Jeremiah 29, 11, a great verse. I, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Look at 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. It says this, And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, look at this, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Now that verse was given to a bunch of uh, Jewish converts who had been persecuted, but I believe the same principle applies to us today. You may have suffered just a little bit. Something maybe has been missing from your life for quite some time, but the God, the King of all kings, the Lord of all lords, the God of life is here to not only restore you, but once again, he wants to make you strong. He wants to make your life firm. He wants to make you steadfast. There was restoration because of the word of the king. When we come to the word of the king of kings, there is restoration for each and every one of us. Oh, but don't stop there. Don't stop there. Not only was there restoration, but there, there was also reward. The king added something. Did you catch that verse 6? He said, give the woman her house back. Give her her land back. But tell you what, let's not stop there. Let's also give her the income 
that she would have earned from having that land for the last seven years. She, she didn't ask for that. She didn't ask for that. But the king blessed her on top of her needs. I'm, <laughs> I'm reminded, so many people want to skip the whole book of Job. Okay? But the last chapter, one of the last few verses in the book of Job says, after Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes and gave him twice as much as he had before. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21 are some of my favorite verses in the Bible. It says, and, and Paul, Paul is praying this prayer. And he says, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. According to his power who is at, that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. To him, I'll, I'll quote it in the version that I've memorized it in, to him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you could ever ask or imagine. I, I've served the Lord for most of my life. And here's one thing about the Lord that I have been blown away with constantly. And Ralph, if you can help me, that'd be great. Is that not only does he answer my prayers... But so many times God goes the extra mile. And, and, he does, and he does more than I ask him to do. It's, it's amazing. I say, Lord, provide for me. And he says, well, not only will I do that, but I'm going to do a little bit more. You know, as, as a father, I love doing that for people that I love. I, I, I love to bless people unexpectedly, when, when they don't expect it. <laughs> Yesterday morning, my son surprised my wife and me with breakfast. He's a great cook. He and McDonald's are a great cook, but they're a great cook. <laughs> I didn't know I was coming. It was great. I thought, wow, that just so cool. And, and, and it really made me think of the goodness of the Lord when those times that I've asked God to help me, or, or i got to be straight with you, there's been, there's been times that I haven't even asked God to do something for me, and he still blesses me. And then I sit back and say, I, oh, God, I don't even deserve that. And it's like he reminds me, I know. but he doesn't bless me because I deserve it. He blesses me because he loves me. I don't earn his blessings. I just receive them. I want my house back. I, 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 I want my happiness back. I want my peace back. I want, I want my security back. I want my identity back. I, 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 I just want to be happy again, Pastor. I just want to be pain free. I, I don't want to worry anymore. I, I, I don't want my life to be full of stress. God, I, I just, I don't, I don't want that anymore. I, I, I want everything that you have for me, I, I, I want it back. It was there once before, God. But I want it back. What, what is that for you? What, what is that for you? What, what is missing from your life that God needs to return and restore and maybe even reward again. I'm going to pray. And by praying, here's what we're doing. We're, we're coming to the king. We're coming to his throne with confidence. And we're going to give God our plea. And when we do that today, let, let's, just, let's just trust him. Let, let's, let's trust his timing. Let's trust his plan. 
let's have enough confidence in our Lord that he definitely knows what he's doing. And let's, let's just go to him. Let's just go to him. And let, let's believe that not only will he bring back what's been taken from us, not only will he bring back maybe what we dropped, but he'll also reward. He's a rewarder of those who earnestly, earnestly seek him. That he will bless us on top of the request. And this morning I'm trusting for restoration in every life that's hearing this today. Will you pray with me? And then I want you to worship with as Ralph leads. And let's just seek him during that, Lord. God, I come to you today and I pray that you would restore what's been taken from us. And Jesus, for those of us who are not serving you today, we pray this prayer. Jesus, come into my life. Help me to live for you and not myself. I confess with my mouth that you are Lord and I believe in my heart that you rose from the dead. And today, Lord God, I make a decision to live for you. I give my life completely to you. So God, if you are missing, I pray that that prayer would be prayed by people everywhere. Jesus, many of us, we've been serving you maybe a long time, maybe shorter than others, but God, for some of us, there's something missing and we need it back. I pray, God, that that moment of restoration will begin today as we approach you, our King, and as we trust you and your plan and your timing and everything that you have for us, we come to you. And Lord, I pray that we would know that you are the God who restores and you are the God who rewards. And God, you are here to meet and touch and be with every single person crying out to you. So Lord, hear our prayers and touch our hearts. In Jesus' name. Still more awesome than I know. You are my reward worth living for. Still more awesome than I know. And all of you is more than enough for all of me for every thirst and Heaven indeed, you satisfy me with your love. And all I have in you is more than enough. Oh Lord, you're more than enough. You're my sacrifice of greatest price are still more awesome than I know you're my coming king you are everything are still more awesome than I know and all of you it's more than enough for all of me for every thirst and heaven need 
you satisfy me with your love and all I have in you is more than enough more than all I want more than all I need you are more than enough for me more than all I know more than all I can see you are more than enough more than all I want more than all I need you are more than enough for me more than all I know, more than all I can see, yeah. you are more than enough, and all of you is more than enough for all of me, for every thirst and every need. You satisfy me with your love. And all I have in you is more than enough. And all I have in you is more than enough. And all we have in you is more than enough.